Today we're going to discuss area plans. So all I've done is open up Revit's advanced sample project and I'm working in Revit 2013. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of the area plans that, are, that has already been created in this project. So right down here under my project browser, I'll open that up and now I can see the plan. And you'll notice it looks similar to if we were to create rooms and do a room color scheme based off of maybe room name or room type or something like that. There's some parameter we define. Um, but essentially the main difference here with areas is if I just select on an area, it's being defined by area separation lines. It's not being defined by the actual walls. Um, so it gives us a lot of freedom, freedom on how we you know, organize these areas. You'll also notice in the area plans I can select on the rooms. Um, right now in this view they're off, uh, but if I just by default they're on. Let me turn that back on there and you'll see I can select this. So sometimes this is helpful, but personally for myself, if I'm working in an area plan, I really don't want to be concerned whether or not you know, is the, that crosses the area, but you know, maybe I don't want to be selecting the wrong thing. So for my use, I'm going to go ahead and just turn rooms back off. Okay, another thing we'll notice is the way the area separation line has been created along the outside perimeter of the building. Um, because this is a gross building um, area, when it automatically generated this boundary, it did it to the exterior face. Now, take, don't take this for granted, um, because what you'll notice is, even in this sample project, it didn't create this one correctly, so this needs to be bumped out. Um, so, while it's nice that, for the most part, it does it pretty well, uh, definitely go through and check things out and make sure it's, it, you know, everything's clean and the way you want it to be. Um, if it were not gross building, it were rentable, it would do the line to the interior face of the wall and it would also include the sills as well and I'll go ahead and show you that when we create our own plan. Um, so there's, there's kind of, we can create more schemes but depending on which one we choose, whether we choose a gross and create a new one for that or rentable, that's what's going to determine how these lines are automatically created if we choose to do so and that'll make more sense once we really get into it. Um, but the next thing I want to do is get into some of the settings. Uh, so what I'm going to do is jump into room and area, area and volume computations. Uh, first thing we notice, and this comes into play more for rooms um, since volumes aren't shown for um, the areas, you know, area plans we're concerned with area, not volume. But right now, um, by default, it's probably set to areas only. So your rooms under the, the parameter for volume is set to not calculated. If you wanted that, you know, if you need it for a schedule or something like that, you could set it here. But again, it's going to run a little slower. So if you don't need it, it's best just to keep it off. Um, and then the next thing we have, room area computation. Again, this is for rooms more so than the actual areas. Area is going to be based off of the actual area separation line. You can do it wall finish, wall center, um, the core layer, you'll understand core if you've ever made a custom wall. Um, I'm not going to get into that in this particular video. Um, but one thing that we do want to understand here is computation height. Um, so right now we're calculating the areas, and I'm just going to back out of here for a second and select on the area. You'll notice computation height is set to 1200, uh, I believe this is centimeters. And what's key about that is I'm going to open up this window right here, and I have it already open right here. Um, this horizontal line is representing the computation height. And basically, think of it as a particular height Revit chooses, and it follows the perimeter of that room at that height to determine the area. So you notice if, if we have a curved wall and we do it up, say, two feet from the floor, um, we're not getting the true area of that room. You know, so if you wanted that room's area to be actual, you know, the carpet area that you're going to need, you would want to drop it down to zero for the computation height. Um, since Revit uses the area of the room to calculate volume, um, that height is also going to affect volume because if we trace the perimeter of the room at this height, uh, the volume is going to be less than if we were to drop down here since we're going to have a greater area. So that's one thing to understand about computation height. Um, so how do we adjust computation height? Well, it's actually controlled on an instance property of the level that the room is hosted to. Okay, so just to jump back into Revit, 
if I click on this area, we're noticing computation height is set to 1200. Um, and right now it's based off of 01 entry level. If I just go ahead and jump into any elevation here and choose 01 entry level, that's right here. This is where this is controlled. So if I drop this down to say 600, any room or area that is hosted on that level, so now I'm going to jump back to this level here, will have its computation height adjusted. Bring this back up and select here, and now we're showing 600 for the computation height. So again, it's based off of the level. If you have straight walls, it doesn't matter, but again, it's just something to be aware of. Um, so it's a little bit of a tangent, but it, I think it's an important thing to note as we get into some of these area and volume computations. Okay, so I'm going to come back in here, and the other control we have is for area schemes. Um, so I have gross building and rentable that have been created, but I want to create my own. Now, one thing that's important that a lot of people miss here is depending on which one I have selected, when I say new, it's going to control how I have the ability to automatically generate these lines. So I'm going to choose rentable so that when it automatically creates the perimeter lines for me, it's going to create them to the inside portion of the building. I wish it would say new and then give you the option, do you want to base it off rentable or gross building rules, but it doesn't. So I'm going to select rentable and hit new. And we're going to call this um, rent rentable catapult. And I'll leave the description just as is and go ahead and hit OK. So now let's go ahead and create our own area plan. So I'm going to do that again under the architecture tab, come to the area drop down, choose area plan. So now you'll notice under type where before we would have just had gross building and rentable, we now also have our rentable catapult. Um, so just so you know, if I were to choose gross building and allow myself to duplicate views and do 01 entry level, it's going to use those same area separation lines as the plan I'm looking at right now. And if I were to delete one, it would move it from this plan and vice versa. So it's almost like a, a dependent view. I mean, when you're creating it in one, it's going to affect the other. Um, but we're doing a whole new one here, rentable catapult, 01 entry level, that's good. And just go ahead and click OK. Now this is where it comes up whether you choose gross building when you hit new or rentable when you hit new. Because we chose rentable, if I choose to automatically create uh, area boundary lines with the external walls of my buildings, it, you'll see how it creates it differently from the gross building that we're currently seeing here. So I'm going to say yes, then I'm going to zoom in, and you'll notice it's going to the inside face, and what's also interesting is it's wrapping around inside and including um, the sills here per BOMA standards. Okay, and again, you want to go around and kind of check things out and make sure it did a decent job of it and make sure it didn't jump to the outside of the wall for some reason. Um, it's gotten a lot better over the years, but definitely take it with a grain of salt and double check your work. Okay, so it quickly created the perimeter, which is kind of a time saver. But as far as the interior goes, I don't have any separation. So if I were to place an area in this building right now, it would take up the whole building. So. I'm just going to create a couple uh, area separation lines in here, but not you know full out just for time's sake. Uh, but basically, we do this again all under the architecture tab here, area boundary, and I can choose to pick lines. <clears throat> and I can also just draw lines if I wanted to. Uh, but important thing to note um, when I'm picking lines, if I choose to apply area rules, um, this is controlled off of the area type. Okay, so up here, I'm going to create some areas that are using area separation lines that have apply area rules checked off, whereas down at the bottom, I'm going to have them off when I do that, so you can kind of see the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose to give myself some separation here. Um, and I can use my standard modify tools if I want to extend this line to say, I believe it's going to come to this line here. I can do that. Uh, trim works just fine as well if you need to do that. Just in a single element there. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing down at the bottom under my architecture area boundary. But the difference is I'm going to turn off this apply area rules. And right now it's on set on pick lines. Um, I can pick the center point of that wall, which is nice. 
Okay, I'm going to extend this out here. And I'll just um, give myself one more in here. Make sure that's off again. Something like that. I'm using a trim extend. And then I'll go ahead and just take this all the way up here. Okay. So now that I have that set up, I'm actually going to create some areas. And how do we do that? Again, it's all under architecture. Choose area. And it's the same way if you've ever placed a room in Revit. Uh, pretty much the same thing, except now you're seeing it defined by the area separation lines that we created. Choose there. One in there. I have another separation in there. The majority of my building is kind of circulation there. And then I have a couple different spaces down through here. Okay. Uh, maybe I want to get some information about these areas displayed before I kind of continue, so I'm going to go ahead and choose to tag them. Again, we can tag them on an individual basis with this tool here, or I can just say tag them all with this and choosing my area tags. And right now I only have one tag loaded, so I don't have different options, but I'm just going to say apply now all my areas have been tagged. Okay, so getting back to the area separation lines and what's so important about apply rules or not. So right now if I select on this area type and if I come and adjust and right now I just select on the room so again I'm going to turn rooms off there before I confuse myself and I'm also going to turn off maybe um, the off furniture to apply. And again, this might be a nice time to set up a view template for it if you wanted, but there we have that. And now, right now, this is set to area type uh, building common, but maybe this is um, office area. So I can adjust this, but if, let's say if I had made it um, exterior area, what you're going to notice is nothing happens with these lines. They don't shift, they don't change, uh, no matter what I set area type to. Whereas up on the north end of my building, right now, if I take this and change it to, let's say, office area, these aren't going to adjust, but if I made this exterior area, hit apply, you're going to notice the walls automatically shift, but now it is going to the exterior face of the wall. Um, this one, again, you want to check on these things. It didn't do it for this, but it did it for the rest. So that's basically how that apply area rules is controlled. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and give myself, you know, maybe I want to set this to building comments fine for that. I mean, this is going to be office over here just to give it some variety um, and show you how we can create uh, the color schemes. So essentially on this view all I would do is select color scheme over here on properties with nothing selected. I have properties of the view and choose, uh, you know, I can make more schemes. I'm going to just use, use this one based off of area type and apply. And automatically I've started to create this color scheme. And again if I came down and set this one to say office, it's automatically going to update that color. Okay, so that's essentially how we create the color schemes. Um, and the, one of the last things I want to touch on is creating a schedule. So all we would need to do is come under view and choose schedule quantities. And what we're seeing here is we have uh, areas gross building and rentable. Those are the two that were defaultly created um, in this project. Uh, but I also have rentable catapult now, so I can collect, select on this one, so I don't worry about you know how gross buildings organize with the areas. Um, I'm more concerned about this scheme that I've created. Hit OK, and I can say that I want uh, area, maybe the name. Um, shift that up, and maybe area type as well, and go ahead. And I could set up again if you've created schedules. This is all pretty much the same process, hit OK, and here's my schedule. And again, sometimes it's nice if you go through and set all your names up and maybe they can help you key off of or set your area types. And now I just know that I want this to be called uh, office. And you can start to um, kind of define more information, uh, you know, a little quicker than if you were to just be working inside a floor plan. 
Last thing we'll note is that where I had area plans gross building created here, it's created another separate drop down for my own scheme that I created. Um, <clears throat> but you know, for the most part, that's everything I wanted to cover on areas. And uh, thanks for watching.